Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the um, AXA 06 presentation uh, earnings. As you can see, the whole management board uh, is here today for this event. After the presentation, uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions with the priority given to the room. Um, before leaving the floor to Henri de Castre, we would like to make two short preliminary, pre preliminary comments. Um, first, we, rem we remind you that uh, AXA closed the Winterthur acquisition at the end of December 2006, and therefore AXA's um, 06 PNL excludes Winterthur. However, balance sheet and embedded value um, uh, to be disclosed on April 10 will include Winterthur. Um, the, second, uh, the second point is that you will see throughout the presentation that uh, 05 and 04 accounts have been restated to reflect two changes. The first one is that following IISB decision, TSDI, which are perpetual sub-notes, uh, have to be booked like the TSS, which are perpetual deeply sub-notes. Uh, that means that interest charges are booked in equity and not anymore in earnings. The impact on the underlying earnings is around 80 million euros uh, 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 positive for 04, 04, 05, 06. The second uh, accounting change is that all foreign exchange impacts are now booked in net income and not anymore in adjusted earnings. For detailed information, you have uh, 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 more, more information on the page, uh, pages 57 and 58 of the presentation, but please, uh, uh, you, will, uh, you, you can have a look at this uh, after the presentation. And now here's uh, Henri de Castre uh, to begin with the results presentation. Thank you, Etienne. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's great to have to uh, discuss these results. It's certainly easier than the ones we had to uh, discuss back in 2002, as we said with some members of the management board this morning. Uh, 2006 has been a great year, as you see. And uh, why has it been a great year? I think it's because it's the first time that the deployment of our strategy is really fully visible in all numbers. Uh, and I'll start by the, uh, by the revenues. As you know, as part of our uh, 2012 ambition, we think that uh, uh, we can grow and that we have to grow our uh, revenues by more than 10% or around 10% on the life side, around 3 5% on the property casualty side and over 10% on the asset management side. On all these benchmarks, 2006 is either aligned or exceeding the uh, the long-term goals. The uh, the life APs have been going at 15%. So the pace, which was the pace of the group at the in the first half, has been maintained throughout the year. On the property casualty side, and despite the fact that uh, um, in some markets uh, uh, the uh, competitive conditions are hardening a little bit. It, the growth is uh, a strong one, 4%. Uh, we've been gaining, as you will see in the detailed presentation, we've been gaining share in most, uh, in most of the places. And the asset management operations are, um, have been seeing uh, really a record year, both on the Alliance Bernstein side and on the uh, AXA investment manager side. So you see there the fact that the choice we've made to be uh, financial protection, open architecture, multi-distribution is fully paying and giving us an organic growth rate, which is now visibly higher than most, if not all, of the, uh, of the competitors. And this growth is a very profitable growth, as uh, uh, you see in the earnings numbers. Just to highlight uh, some of the key points as far as the earnings are concerned, one of the, uh, uh, I think, very good news of this results presentation is what has happened with the, uh, the new business value. So new business value is up 34% and reaches for the first time ever 1.5 billion. If you go back, I think two years ago, it was only half of that. So. Uh, it's a very, very uh, significant, uh, very significant increase. And this is due to the volumes. This is also due to the margins because the margins have been increasing by three and a half points 
you will see why in a few minutes when Denis will discuss the details, but I think it's a satisfactory situation. On the property casualty side, the combined ratio is going down further, and this with a reserving situation, which is a very cautious one. On the asset management side, due to uh, the, uh, the volumes and due to the net inflows, the, uh, the cost income ratio is going down further, so there too, the margins are in uh, good shape. So increase in profitability in all segments due, generally speaking, to very strong volumes and an improvement in the various uh, business mixes. If you translate that into underlying and adjusted earnings, it's a 20% increase on the underlying side, uh, with the earnings reaching for the first time ever the 4 billion hurdle. Uh, the base, I mean the gross base since we started Ambition 2012 exceeds 20%. Uh, and you know that uh, what uh, I would say, the, the, uh, to reach 2012, we need 15%, which means for another year, we are ahead of the, um, the long-term plans. On adjusted earnings, it's also a 20% increase uh, with uh, a slight increase in realized capital gains. I think the choice we, the strategic choice we've made to keep a significant equity exposure in the various uh, uh, portfolios was the right one, uh, and, and you will see that we are increasing our long-term targets as far as uh, um, capital gains extraction uh, is concerned. If you look at the uh, um, uh, gross of both underlying and adjusted on a per share basis. The gross is remaining very solid despite the fact that at approximately half of the year we have increased the number of shares to uh, uh, finance the Vinstertur operation. On a per share basis, the underlying earnings are going 16%, the adjusted earnings are going 17%. Uh, we think it's there to uh, a strong case. All this leads us to uh, uh, propose to the show meeting, and this was approved yesterday by the uh, supervisory board, an increase in the dividend uh, by 20% at 106 euros. This uh, um, puts us at a distribution rate, at a payout ratio of 40% of adjusted earnings. Uh, we, it's the bottom of the range we have indicated as a long-term target. And I think it's nice to have a 20% increase without, uh, uh, I would say, being at the top of the range. It shows that uh, there is flexibility for the uh, years to come as far as uh, the progression of the dividend is, uh, is concerned. So if you, when you look at the numbers, as you see, uh, the group uh, ended 2006 in great shape. I'd like for a few seconds to go beyond the numbers uh, because I think it's much more than just numbers. The, uh, um, the good results are also coming from the fact that the customer satisfaction in, is increasing. You know that in our sector, the quality of service is a very, very important factor to uh, keep and grow the portfolios. If the quality of service is poor, the customer satisfaction is going down, you lose your clients, your profitability goes down. We've made significant efforts to increase the quality of service. It's reflected in the customer satisfaction index, which is growing by three points. It's not enough. We think we still have a lot to do there, and we think it's going to be one of the uh, priorities going forward, which means we still think that in this area, there is a lot of room to uh, do better and long-term to grow the earnings. Same thing on the employee engagement side. In a business where people are more important than anything else, you need to have everybody, uh, uh, I would say, sharing your view of the future and ready to do the extra efforts you, uh, you need to uh, outpace the competition. The employee engagement has been progressing, a little bit marginally, but it's still, uh, it's still progressing. It's also an area where we think we have um, a lot of things to do. We, will, uh, um, we are now taking an approach which is a multi-year approach as far as the development of the uh, employees is concerned with the initiative called Passport 2012. And as you will see, we are going to open discussions to see how we can have all the employees become shareholders of the group because we think it's a very good way to have uh, uh, a better alignment in the uh, in the long term. <coughs> If we go back, uh, or, or if we go back, if we go to the uh, um, to the strategy, um, how have we deployed it? If you analyze 2006, 
What we've done basically is simple. We have tried to pursue on the way we uh, had defined back in the uh, early years of this new century. We have tried to increase the global reach and the diversification of the group. The Winterthur acquisition, of course, but Winterthur was not the only acquisition of the year. We've made in 2006 11 acquisitions. Uh, many of them are not as large as Winterthur. But all of them are significant when you analyze them in the framework of our long-term plans. As an example, to increase our presence in emerging markets, we have acquired Alpha Assurance in Greece with a long-term bank assurance agreement. We have set up a life insurance partnership with the Barty Group in India. You know that the Barty Group is one of the most dynamic, if not the most dynamic, uh, uh, Indian group in telecommunications. We think it's a great partner. We have have significant ambition there. On the other hand, we have not neglected the fact that we need to reinforce our positions in the markets we are in. This was one of the key attractions of the, uh, of the Winterthur deal. And we have also, in the UK, in the last months, uh, since Nicolas Moreau has taken over as a CEO, made a significant number of, uh, uh, I would say, small or middle-sized acquisitions, which are very much reinforcing our grip on the, uh, uh, on the distribution side of both the property casualty and the life uh, and the life business uh, this is for the uh, i would say geographical reach of the operations uh, we've also worked hard uh, on the uh, i would say on the balance sheet and on the uh, on the risk uh, as part of the initiative uh, uh, linked to the necessity to innovate uh, faster and to spread the uh, innovative products throughout the group, we have set up a European hedging platform to support the rollout of the accumulator type uh, products in Europe. Uh, and this was done in Ireland. The launch of Twinstar in Germany, which was done under the skepticism of many people at the beginning of 2006, has proven to be uh, a success, even if we think we can still go way beyond where we are, uh, where we are today. You'll see the impact on the uh, German new business value. We are very actively managing our risk profile, and Denis and his teams are, uh, um, uh, I think, very well managing to stay uh, or to be at the leading hedge of innovation in these uh, sectors with the first mortality cat bond, with uh, also the fact that we have existed the reinsurance business, which most of you uh, didn't like. Uh, last but not least, we continue to try to optimize the uh, earnings per share. The cancellation of the uh, um, convertible bonds, uh, which could have had a dilutive impact uh, on the earnings, is, I think, uh, good news for the shareholders. Um, we have, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, been active on what we call the dilution control program, uh, and we intend to uh, resume this program now. Uh, so as you see, there is an active, proactive management of the, uh, of the, uh, of the balance sheet. So these are the highlights, and I'd like Denis now to uh, comment uh, the earnings uh, into more details. Thank you, Henri. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will now move to the, um, uh, the detailed presentation of the, uh, of the uh, financial performance of uh, AXA and uh, start uh, with the uh, breakdown by, uh, um, by segment. Uh, as you see, all business units contributed once again quite nicely to the uh, underlying earnings performance. Uh, <clears throat> life and savings uh, earnings went up 20%. Uh, PNC uh, was up six percent, eight percent. Sorry, asset management twenty-eight percent, international insurance up ninety-two uh, percent. Uh, let me dwell on that just for a, a minute because we won't come back to it. International insurance was uh, is the segment where we used to have Axari. Uh, as you know, we've sold the uh, business of Axari. We just have the uh, positive developments on the uh, runoff of the uh, of the portfolio, uh, and we have in that segment uh, as well AXA Corporate Solutions, which had a very uh, good performance in 2006. Um, so, and 2005 for Axari was impacted by the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, hurricanes, 
so this uh, explains this uh, rebound. And other financial services and holdings uh, were uh, roughly stable. I will come back to that. Starting with the uh, uh, life and savings business, I am now on page uh, 16. You see that uh, uh, the uh, new business volumes uh, were, quite, uh, were quite strong. Henri has uh, mentioned the plus 15% already, but uh, I'd like to uh, highlight a few, uh, a few um, uh, th important things on this slide. First, the um, unit link business went up uh, much faster at a, a pace of 30%, and unit linked business now represented in 2006, 51% of the total new business versus 45% uh, in 2005. Uh, second, um, second element, you see that uh, the growth was uh, quite important in, uh, in the UK uh, on the back of, uh, of ADA in particular, the, um, the pension reform, uh, but it was also quite strong in Japan at a time when a number of our competitors uh, registered uh, uh, low growth or, or no growth, and also quite strong in France, uh, the US, and Hong Kong. We had uh, strong positive cash flows uh, and growing cash flows. You can look at this in two ways. Uh, total cash flows went up 6%, uh, but they were impacted by uh, significant outflows of with profit business in the UK. Um, let me remind you that we stopped writing with profit UK in the UK in 2002. So we now have uh, uh, um, with profit uh, investment bonds of the uh, late 90s uh, maturing in the UK, and we have uh, significant outflows uh, in the UK of 2.7 uh, billion euros in 2006 versus 1.9 in 2005. <laughs> Excluding that, our uh, life cash flows moved um, uh, up 12% from 11.9 to 13.2 billion euros. We also registered accelerating, the accelerating cash flows on the mutual fund side, and this is just the mutual funds that are distributed through uh, the life and savings segments, uh, i.e. the life insurance companies or their distribution subsidiaries. So it's not all the mutual fund business that we sell uh, through our asset managers, and this is more open architecture type mutual funds, so it's not just mutual funds from our uh, own asset managers. <clears throat> The, the story of our life business is, uh, is uh, quite simple. It's 15% uh, growth in annual premium equivalent in APE, in volumes, uh, uh, an expansion of margin of 3.5%, uh, which leads to this uh, quite uh, important growth in new business value of 34% to a, a, a billion five uh, euros. And now let's, let me get into the detail of that, uh, uh, of that uh, performance on new business value. Uh, we see that there is a very strong moment momentum uh, in almost all uh, markets, starting with the ones that uh, didn't have a, a strong performance. Uh, you see uh, Benelux uh, at uh, uh, plus, um, plus 6 percent. Um, sorry, plus 8%, and uh, Benelux is just a, a factor of uh, essentially uh, tax reform in Belgium, which uh, uh, happened at the end of 2005. So we had very strong volumes uh, in anticipation of this tax reform and 05, and lower volume because unit link business was disadvantaged from a tax perspective compared to mutual funds in Belgium. Uh, and, uh, um, I mean, in spite of that, we managed to have a growth in NBV, uh, a performance which was uh, probably significantly better than uh, most of our competitors. Southern Europe, we lost a uh, bank assurance uh, contract in one of the Southern Europe countries, so uh, disappointing performance. Other than that, extremely strong performance across the board, uh, with France at plus 28 uh, percent uh, on the back of uh, new product launches that happened in the last quarter of 05 and during 06. Uh, the performance in France was uh, uh, very strong both on the uh, individual side and on the, uh, on the group side. In the US, uh, performance was uh, spectacular at uh, plus 51 percent, and this is the combination of continued uh, strong sales and gain in market share on the uh, viable annuity side, and also accelerated growth in the uh, viable life side with the uh, third-party business growing quite, uh, quite fast. In the UK, I mentioned A-Day, uh, the pension, uh, pension reform, but also, we also benefited from very strong um, um, investment bonds 
sales essentially uh, offshore. In Japan, uh, also a very strong growth at 24%, uh, which uh, was due to uh, successful uh, launch of, uh, of new products uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, medical and, uh, and, and term products. Uh, which and, and also uh, good uh, good performance on the saving side, but the most spectacular performance was uh, re registered in Germany, uh, where our new business value tripled, and this is really the impact of the uh, new uh, viable annuity with secondary guarantees, the product uh, that we call TwinStar, uh, which uh, which was as successful as we uh, had expected, uh, with uh, and g gave us uh, a total of new business value for Germany of 90 million euros. <clears throat> uh, this performance, when you look uh, at the total, is the combination of a growth in volume, an improved mix with more unit link business and more protection business, uh, uh, good productivity improvements, so the, there was a an imp positive impact of the expense leverage, and uh, also better investment market conditions with uh, uh, higher interest rates which um, uh, lowers the cost of the options and guarantees <clears throat> on, the, uh, on the new business value. So in total, a very strong growth at 34%. Moving now to the uh, earnings performance on life, uh, I mentioned the, uh, the plus 22% uh, uh, earlier. Um, I need to comment a few, um, uh, a few uh, elements. In the US, uh, the growth of 16% was positively impacted by a, a tax one-off uh, of 92 million euros in 2006. Uh, so um, without that, the performance doesn't look uh, as uh, spectacular. Um, um, but we need to take into account that uh, there was a, an, an important, um, an important uh, litigation that was settled in 2005 um, um, a, a Transamerica uh, litigation, uh, and uh, on a pre-tax basis, the performance uh, in 2006 uh, is, uh, is still double digit if we exclude the, this uh, uh, one-off in 2005. In, um, in Japan, uh, you see that the growth is only 1%, but uh, there was a non-recurring uh, 67 million uh, euro positive in 2005, and uh, if, you, uh, if you exclude that, uh, the performance is also quite, uh, quite good. Uh, so excluding those two one-offs, the, the tax one-off in the US and the, the non-recurring element in Japan, the performance would have been 21% instead of 22%, so still a quite, uh, quite a good number. Moving now to uh, uh, the, um, tr <clears throat> what we uh, traditionally present to you, the margin analysis, you can see that uh, our performance was the combination on the margin side from positive uh, improvement in the performance of uh, investment margin on the back of uh, strong dividends and uh, good management of the crediting rates, uh, very strong performance at uh, plus 15% of the fees and revenues, because of the increase in the uh, unit link business, and uh, uh, well, this is this is one of the of the main factors, but also the growth in the volume of the business more generally, and on the technical margin, uh, good performance as well at plus 10 percent, reflecting the fact that we are selling more protection business. On the uh, expense side, uh, you see that uh, expense, uh, expenses went up only 5% when the gross margins went up 12%. This is the productivity uh, factor that I mentioned earlier. Uh, taxes in increased quite substantially at uh, 39%. So uh, if you look all in all, um, gross margins improved 12%, while uh, expenses, tax and minority interest increased 8%. We still have a positive leverage, uh, and this explains the growth of 21% of the uh, of the life earnings the um, uh, on the on the property casualty side uh, we uh, had a very good performance uh, in a um, in a very competitive market on the revenue grow on the revenue side first which is this uh, this slide 23 the growth was uh, four percent this growth of four percent uh, is a combination of uh, very fast growth uh, businesses particularly the UK at plus 7%, and emerging markets, which we show, uh, uh, we probably highlight for the first time in 2006, but our performance in emerging markets in terms of revenue growth was uh, quite uh, spectacular. Uh, we also had good performance in France and, uh, and Belgium, 
and, uh, and Southern Europe at 4%, so in line with the group uh, growth, slower growth at 1% in, uh, in Germany. Uh, and this is uh, the combination, all in all, of a growth of 5% of personal lines with very strong inflows in, uh, in motor and almost 1 million uh, new uh, contracts and good performance in households at um, more than 230,000 uh, contracts and good performance in commercial lines at, uh, at 4%. So this uh, um, revenue growth of 4% in a uh, market which is becoming more competitive is, uh, we believe, a very strong achievement. The combined ratio uh, continued to improve in, 2000, uh, in 2006 for the uh, seventh year in a row. Uh, it's now 96.9%, uh, .9%, an improvement of 0 0.8 points, uh, which uh, <clears throat> in the context of uh, a growth of 4%, uh, we believe is good. The loss ratio improved uh, 0.9 of a percent, and the expense ratio deteriorated by uh, 0.1 percent. This expense ratio deterioration is, in fact, uh, the combination of an improvement of the administrative expense ratio, which means that we continue to have uh, uh, positive expense leverage. Uh, this is more than uh, fully compensated by an increase in the acquisition expense ratio, uh, which reflects uh, a continued change in mix in the UK uh, for higher, um, higher commission business, uh, providing us with a lower uh, loss ratio. If you look across the board at our performance country by country, you see that uh, we have an improvement of the combined ratio in all of our entities, except UK and Ireland uh, at plus 0.2%, but this is the combination of an improvement in the UK and a deterioration in, the, in Ireland, uh, where the combined ratio uh, increased by almost 10 points, but uh, remains, uh, remains quite, uh, quite good uh, in, in, in absolute terms. Uh, on the, on the uh, bottom of the slide, you see that our technical results uh, improved by 190 million as a result of this uh, improvement in the combined ratio. Our investment income also continued to improve uh, because we uh, continue to have a strong positive cash flows uh, as a result of this uh, growth in revenues in the PNC business. Uh, this was partly offset by um, the, the, increase, um, the increasing tax uh, as, as expected. Moving to the next slide, we, uh, we show you uh, uh, traditionally this uh, uh, set of flags uh, showing uh, uh, the uh, dotted line in the middle, which shows 0% uh, in terms of price changes. We represent here the um, average premium for renewals of existing business across our major uh, European businesses. You see that the picture, picture is mixed. We continue to have renewals that are done um, uh, at, uh, with positive, I mean, with, with rate increases. We also have uh, more uh, flags that are below the line, so rate declines. Uh, we, you will not be surprised to see that there were strong rate declines in Ireland, as an example, but this has been the case now for more than two years. Also, uh, rate declines uh, probably dominating as far as the UK is concerned, and uh, to some extent, as far as Belgium is concerned, uh, French motor is also a uh, rate decline, but you also see a, a significant proportion of uh, rate increases uh, in Switzerland, as an example, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany for a certain number of lines, uh, and, uh, and in France also for, for a number of lines. So the picture is, in terms of, competi of uh, competitive situation, remains mixed as far as AXA is concerned, which means that we are not, uh, we are not worried about, um, uh, about two, 2007 in terms of the uh, competitive environment and our ability to uh, continue to perform in PNC. On the asset management side, uh, moving to the next slide, uh, we, uh, uh, we showed a very, very strong performance in asset management. And let me start first with the uh, assets under management increase. Uh, average assets under management in 2006 increased by 18% to uh, 968 billion for our two asset managers. End of year asset, uh, assets under management increased by 19% to uh, a trillion and 29 million euros. This is not the total assets under management of AXA because you would, you would have to add to that at your end uh, the assets managed directly by the insurance companies and the assets of Vintotour. And when you look at the assets of, the two, of our two asset, management, asset managers, you see that the business, uh, the third party business continues to increase in proportion. It represents 671 billion euros. 
it's 65% of the assets and the management versus 61.5 at the end of 2005. Uh, this growth in assets under management uh, is the combination of uh, net inflows of 73 billion euros, uh, uh, market appreciation because of positive uh, equity markets essentially of 92 billion euros, offset by foreign exchange of uh, a movement of 58 billion euros, uh, which is uh, related to the strengthening of the euro versus other currencies. All in all, uh, as I said earlier, the assets increased by 19%. When you look at the performance of our two asset managers, Alliance Bernstein and AXA Investment Managers, it was extremely strong. Revenues up respectively 25% for Alliance Bernstein and 38% for AXA Investment Managers. AXA Investment Managers revenues are the revenues coming from third parties because uh, um, we consolidate AXA IM and the revenues coming from the insurance comp companies are eliminated. Uh, the underlying uh, cost income ratio uh, went down for both businesses by 1.5 and 1.6 points and the underlying earnings went up 27% at Alliance and 20 and 32% uh, at AXA investment managers. So across the board, a very, very strong performance of our asset managers. Moving to uh, other financial services and holdings, uh, this, um, uh, this slide showed that we had uh, a negative contribution uh, of uh, 404 uh, um, billion, uh, million in 2005 and 406 million in 2006. Other financial services uh, um, earnings declined because of a decline in the uh, earnings of uh, AXA Bank uh, Belgium with the flattening of the yield, of the yield curve. Uh, and um, the holdings performance is the combination of non-recurring financial income from, in from the placement of our capital increase, uh, uh, which occurred in July, uh, which is offset uh, in part by higher financial charges, charges and higher share-based compensation. Moving now to uh, the, the, uh, um, to the uh, breakdown of our earnings by uh, uh, non-GAAP measure, underlying earnings, uh, we, we already talked about up 20%, adjusted earnings with the impact of capital gains also up 20%. Uh, the uh, growth of the um, net income was only 18%. Uh, this is the uh, combination of two uh, offsetting factors. Uh, the uh, uh, mark to market of the uh, um, derivatives and financial assets at fair value, which was this year a negative of 226 million euros. This is the result of the uh, essentially uh, uh, currency impacts and the uh, impact of the uh, increase in interest rates. Uh, and exceptional uh, operations uh, positively um, impacted in 2006 at 196 million euros by a number of uh, one-off factors, uh, uh, tax refunds uh, concerning the, the sale of DLJ in 2000, um, a dilution gain um, uh, coming from uh, the um, exercise of stock option at the Lions Bernstein, and the sale of Axari, which uh, was a positive uh, 66 million. With that, uh, I will thank you and hand over back to uh, Henri de Castre. Uh, sorry, one, one more slide, uh, but Henri is welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, I need to show you the um, impact, how we are going to mitigate the impact of the dilution of Vintitur. Uh, you see that uh, on this slide that we had at the end of uh, 06 uh, an outstanding number of shares of 2 billion and 93 million euros. Uh, and we, uh, Henri mentioned the fact that we have uh, eliminated the uh, dilution impact of our uh, convertible bonds. Uh, this will uh, remove, uh, on a fully diluted basis, 66 million shares. On the other hand, we have uh, the, the full impact of the um, uh, capital increase. Uh, the capital increase was 208 million shares. So there is a remaining 93 million uh, shares that will impact the, uh, uh, the uh, diluted number of shares of 2007. So we have offset in 2007 two-thirds of the dilutive impact of, uh, of the uh, capital increase uh, related to Vintour, so which means that uh, we are starting the year on a, on a good foot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Denis. A uh, couple of words on the Vintour integration before uh, handling the uh, the outlook for 2007. 
where do we stand with, uh, with Winterthur? I think we have to look at two or three things. A, uh, uh, in what shape is the company itself? B, uh, what does it bring to uh, AXA as a whole? C, how is it going to be integrated? If we start by uh, in what sort of shape is the company itself, I think that Winterthur was in 2006, and therefore is still, or even more, in good shape. If you look at the earnings they are releasing, if you look at what the performance has been in terms of life APEs, it's a growth of 18%, which as you see is not only comparable but slightly higher than what we have been experiencing. The growth in Switzerland is only 6%, but it's a positive one. And the growth in the rest of Europe is 20% for continental Europe and 37% for the UK. Uh, therefore, I mean, the ones who showed that there was no growth potential in Winterthur, I think, have been proven wrong in, uh, in 2006. If you look at the non-life picture, their growth is slower than ours, but if you look at the detail, it's 2% in Switzerland and 6% in continental Europe, benefiting from what they've done in Spain and Belgium. So we think that this company has uh, a good growth potential. If you look at their earnings, uh, the earnings increase has been fueled by their technical results, despite the fact that the financial income is lower. And if you look at the, uh, the bulk of the operations, which are of interest to us since we have sold um, quite uh, quickly the, uh, the U.S. exposure, their earnings have been going by 7% with a combined ratio, which is at a good level, with a very sound reserving situation, and with a combined ratio, which has also been improving in 2006. So, as they join the, uh, the AXA teams, they are, I think, in good shape. The work which has been done by Lenny Fischer and his teams to uh, um, turn around the company is, uh, um, is a success. It was an attraction, one of the attractions of the deal for us. The fact that the work had been done but was not perceived by the market, uh, uh, I think you have now in the numbers the, uh, the reality of this turnaround. Now, uh, if you look at what does it bring to AXA, you already know that, but it's, it's a significant operation because it adds approximately 20% on average to the, uh, um, I would say, AXA pie. 18% uh, on the life side, 22% on the property casualty side, with a very good uh, uh, penetration in some of the uh, uh, interesting European uh, markets. For us, Switzerland is nearly a new market. We had a small operation in Lausanne, <coughs> very successful one, but very small. We are now a leader in, uh, in Switzerland. It's giving us very good access to uh, Eastern Europe. It's giving us a very strong reinforcement from our market shares in Belgium, in Germany, in Spain, very nice addition in, uh, um, in the UK and some nice pieces in Asia. So for us, it was killing much more than one bird with only uh, <coughs> one stone. It's the sort of operations we really, uh, we really like. Uh, if you look at where are we in terms of integration, uh, I think it's going well. I think it's going fast. Uh, I've been now since 18 years with the group. I've never seen uh, such a pace in an integration. Uh, and this comes from the fact that on both sides, people are enthusiastic about the prospects uh, of the integration. And on both sides, the operations are in good shape with good operational models. If you look at where we are, I mean, first, all the CEOs have been designated, but this is already an old story because this was done in September. Their teams have been uh, built before we even uh, became the uh, legal owners of the, uh, of the company. The brand strategies have been clarified. It's going to be a move to the uh, AXA brand over time with some local uh, flexibility. The target structures are defined and uh, more or less it's going to be a transfer from the winter to assets into the AXA companies or mergers. The key challenges are easy to understand. I mean the challenge in Switzerland is growth uh, and growth. 
uh, we think it's a market where starting from a leadership position we can accelerate the growth. This is true as well on the individual life side as on the property casualty side. Switzerland is a competitive market but with good margins we think that introducing some of the AXA products and, and uh, I would say uh, asking Philippe Guerra and his team to become slightly uh, more aggressive uh, um, without of course deteriorating the margins is something which is going to generate growth, probably not in the next six months, but, but as usual uh, over time we should see that uh, going up. In Germany, the, uh, it's a classical integration issue. Germany is the, um, I would say, the heaviest uh, integration because both companies are of, of significant size. Because in Germany, uh, from a legal and social standpoint, things are always uh, slightly more difficult than in the rest of Europe. But as you know, uh, <laughs> and I see some people smiling, uh, once uh, it's uh, moving, then uh, it's unstoppable. Uh, so uh, the, uh, I think what we need to do is to continue to do what we've been doing, which is launching new products, reorganizing the distribution, but contributing also the Winterthur, the DBV operations to, uh, to AXA. So far, it's going very well. Frank Kuiper, who is the CEO, who was a former AXA guy who had moved to, uh, uh, to Winterthur, is handling that uh, very well under the supervision of, uh, of Freddy. Uh, and the, uh, the roadmap is a very, uh, very clear one. In Belgium, <coughs> it's also a classical merger. There, the key challenge is to manage the combined market share uh, with the brokers because the, uh, the addition of the two market shares is, uh, is leading for some of them to us having a very, very significant share of their business. So there are some attrition risks there. They are very uh, closely managed, but the efficiencies which we're extracting from the merger are going to be uh, very, very uh, significant. In Spain, it's more or less the, uh, the same story. We have to manage actively the retention of the brokers and we have to uh, motivate the, uh, the agents. Um, Winterthur had been uh, slightly neglecting the agents' sales force in Spain um, um, for the benefit of the brokers. We think we can extract more from their agents' uh, sales force. And overall, I think there too, the integration is going well. We are having in, uh, in Belgium, in Spain, and in Germany active discussions with the unions to, uh, I would say, um, restructure the operations from a social standpoint as efficiently and as smoothly as possible. And these discussions are going, uh, are going well. Which leads us to the next point. Uh, we are significantly increasing the synergy targets uh, from the operation. As we told you uh, when we did it in June, we expected Winterthur to be relative by 7% on an earnings per share basis 2000, uh, beginning of 2009. Uh, what we think now uh, is that we can increase the target. The synergies we are going to extract uh, are moved up from 280 to 350 million. It's a 25% increase, and we are extremely comfortable that we will reach this goal. The costs to uh, extract these synergies are only growing by a marginal amount. We think it's probably going to cost us 20, uh, 20 million more. I think, it's, uh, I think it's marginal. Why are we increasing the synergies? A couple of reasons. First, uh, when we look at the way we combine things, we think we can combine them more efficiently than what we thought initially. Second, uh, uh, the pace of the integration is faster, significantly faster than what we were ourselves expecting. And uh, among other things, from a social standpoint, the, uh, the quote restructurings uh, are going better than expected. If you look as an example, because it's very symbolic at the way um, the, uh, the Swiss headquarters issue has been handled, uh, the people have been leaving earlier than what we were expecting and 90% and of them have already found uh, a new job. So uh, uh, we think it's a good example of uh, um, um, the fact that the flexibility in the labor market is not necessarily a negative. But this has nothing to do with our results. Um, so uh, if we go now to the uh, conclusion and to the, uh, to the outlook, well, I mean, if we sum up everything, 2006 was a very good and a very strong year by all, uh, by all measures. A very strong year from a top-line performance, as I said before. 
very strong year for uh, um, uh, an earnings performance. We continue to be ahead of our uh, 2012 uh, ambition uh, goals in terms of pace of achievement, uh, which I think is demonstrating the fact that we really uh, believe in the, uh, in the 2012 uh, ambition. It's not uh, a plan where uh, most of the achievements are going to come in the last two or three years of the plan, a sort of hockey stick curve. Uh, as you've seen, we are uh, now in the early years of the plan uh, delivering more with the average pace than what the average pace uh, should be. The key... Um, the key challenge for 2007 is very, very simple, and we, are, uh, and we are confident when we look at what we have to do in 2007. We need to do two things. We need to keep the growth momentum, because I think it's one of the things differentiating us from the, uh, from the competition, the fact that we can have an organic growth rate, which is, uh, uh, I would say, around 10% uh, um, around overall in terms of, uh, of revenues. And we have to uh, successfully integrate the, uh, the, Winterthur, uh, the Winterthur operation. These are the two things, but all the teams are focused on that, and we are confident we will, uh, we will reach that and, uh, and meet the challenge. As I told you earlier, I think a very important element to achieve the goals is to get, uh, I would say, an extra level of engagement from, from the teams, not that much from the executive teams, uh, even on an enlarged basis, because there I think everybody is on board. If we really want to change the quality of service in the depths of the ranks, we need to have all our employees understand that there is something in it for them. And therefore, what we want to do is to find a way to have all of them become shareholders of the group. If you look at where we are today, approximately uh, 40 to 50 percent of the employees have become shareholders through the uh, AXA share plans. For them, it's a very good investment because on average, they have tripled what they have invested in it. Um, you have a significant number of managers uh, uh, which are holders of options, but we would like to have every employee become a shareholder, so we uh, are going to enter into discussions on a local basis with the, uh, uh, with the representative bodies to uh, look at the way we can uh, um, put in place either uh, Balladur shares programs or similar programs linked to the achievement of the, uh, of the 2012 ambition. That's why at the shareholders meeting we are going to propose to, uh, to devote 0.7% um, uh, of, uh, of the capital to that. Uh, and, and I mean, we have so, some ideas on the ways we should, uh, we should do it. We think it's going to, uh, to increase the uh, alignment and the dilution is going to stay uh, uh, a, limited, uh, a limited one uh, as, you, as you see. So if we look at the outlook for uh, 2007, it remains a favorable outlook uh, because I think we are in a very, uh, um, I would say, interesting situation where the group is in very good shape from an operational standpoint, but is far from having reached its uh, uh, long-term goals, which means that the management believes that there are still very, very significant uh, ways to uh, improve the, uh, the performance. Uh, of course, uh, um, I would say, if there were to be major catastrophes uh, on, on a worldwide basis, this could have uh, uh, some impact, but I mean, at this stage, it's not the case. The world growth remains strong. We think that on the life and saving side, our operations should continue to grow, and we should reap the benefits of the initiative we have taken on product innovation, on quality of service, and on the uh, distribution management side. On the property casualty side, um, I think we will see the confirmation of the fact that the cyclicality of the market is not what it used to be. Yes, of course, there is uh, in some places uh, uh, some tensions on the pricing, but I think we have a room for manoeuvre because the efforts we've made in terms of underwriting, in terms of managing the cost of the claims, in terms of, uh, I would say, ex expanding our commercial efficiency are efforts which are enabling us to, uh, I would say, counterbalance uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the pressure. And on the asset management side, uh, we will benefit in 2007 from the very strong 2006 inflows. And there too, we think that what we have on the table in terms of product offering is, uh, is quite convincing. Last but not least, 
Uh, you've seen that in terms of capital gains, we'd been extracting uh, 1.1 billion uh, in 2006. Uh, the markets remain good. Uh, uh, the exposure to equities we've kept in the various portfolio was, was uh, uh, I think, the right uh, uh, strategic choice. And this leads us to, uh, there to, I mean, very comfortably increase the, uh, the long-term target uh, in terms of extracted uh, uh, capital gains on a recurring basis to 800 to, uh, uh, to a billion. We are uh, very confident that we can, uh, we can achieve that. So this is where... Um, we are good year, good perspectives, uh, um, and uh, a very strong will of the management to uh, implement uh, 2012 and to show that we still have a lot of room to, uh, to improve the, um, the existing operations. Thank you very much, and uh, we will now answer your questions. So do we have questions in the room? Yeah. Yes, could you raise your hand, uh, uh, tell who you are, and, and, and then uh, uh, ask your question. And we'll start with Mr. Derbecourt, I think. Yeah, good morning. Uh, so Jean Derbecourt, Société Générale. I have uh, actually three questions. First of all, could you uh, go with us uh, in the cash flow statement? Because uh, in fact, the cash flow are rising at a lower, per lower pace than the underlying and adjusted profits. And uh, I would like here to have some details on why is this. And also, could you give us a breakdown of uh, operating cash flow between uh, life and, and non-life? Uh, I did not find, so this, this was my first, quest, first question. Second question on reserving. I did not find any clue on uh, the level of reserving at the end of 06 and how it compares with 05. In terms of um, level of comfort you have, do you, did you uh, manage to uh, realize some release of reserves uh, in, uh, the, in today's profits? Uh, so here, I think we, we, we should normally have uh, a much higher visibility. And last but not least, on Japan, um, could you go with us in the performance, uh, especially on the sale of um, unit link products? Thank you. Okay. The, I think Denis is going to take the questions. Uh, first, if I understand your first question, Jean, uh, this relates to our operating cash flow, not the cash flows at the holding company. So on the life side, um, as, as you saw, uh, the, the cash flows were, uh, if, if you include the, the with profit business, uh, were up 6%. If you exclude the with profit business, which is not the most profitable part of our business, the cash flows went up 12% from 11.9 to 13.2. On the PNC side, uh, the uh, cash flows went slightly down from 3.2 billion euros to 2.8 billion euros. But uh, we are still analyzing those uh, numbers, and we believe that it's more a function of uh, an increase in working capital rather than a, a function of the, uh, uh, the un uh, 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 worse underlying performance because the growth of revenues was 4% and it was good. And I relate that to the, uh, and sorry, and, and third, thirdly, and uh, last but not least, on the asset management side, the 73 billion euros which is an absolute record for us. The uh, previous record, I believe, was in uh, 2000 at 40 something uh, billion uh, euros, uh, is, uh, is uh, quite phenomenal. So uh, I would say that our cash flows are very, very strong and bode well for the, for the future performance of the group. On the, uh, on the reserving, um, <clears throat> to, uh, a few comments here. First, when you look at our, co at our loss ratio, uh, it improved by 0.9 uh, points. And uh, the, uh, the uh, current year performance is an improvement of 0.3%, and which means that we have uh, a slightly um, uh, higher amount of uh, bony uh, on uh, uh, previous years. But I would not uh, equate bony on previous years, so positive developments on, pre on previous years, with reserve releases. In fact, uh, if anything, our reserving position uh, is, is stronger at the end of 06 than it was at the end of 05. We've continued to uh, uh, improve the, uh, the strengths of our reserves. Now, with, uh, as you know, we don't publish the balance sheet now, uh, and uh, this is why we've not given you uh, the, uh, um, the, um, reserve, the uh, premium to reserve ratio 
or reserve to premium ratio or reserve to claims ratios, those ratios are slightly deteriorating. Uh, and this is a function, uh, we, we said two years ago that this would happen one, uh, at, at some point. We, we have continued to have lower claims uh, and continue to have uh, accelerating uh, growth in revenues. So naturally, there is a point where uh, the reserving position is, is, very, is very, very strong and you can't uh, continue to improve that ratio. And we have now come to the inflection point and there is a slight deterioration of, the, of this ratio, which is in fact largely explained by a movement in Germany where we've put some business in discontinued uh, and this was long tail business. Uh, but uh, I, I would say that we are arriving at the plateau in terms of, uh, of uh, reserve to premium and reserve to claims. But you shouldn't uh, and, uh, take that as a, as a uh, release of reserves. Uh, we've continued to uh, hold a fairly conservative position on the reserving. J j just to add something, I mean, it's clearly not a deterioration in the operating performance. It's just a reflection of the fact that the, uh, the loss ratio is going down. You don't need to reserve as much when your loss ratio is uh, 60, uh, 67 than, than when your loss ratio was 87. In other terms, when the combined ratio was at 114, we needed to have more reserves because the loss situation was worse than when the, uh, uh, the combined ratio is at 96. And this is what Denis has been describing. So um, in uh, now moving to your third question, which is Japan, uh, you see that in Japan we have a good uh, top line performance with the AP up 16% and NBV up, uh, uh, new business value up 24%. Uh, in Japan, w uh, w the way I would describe the situation is as follows. In the first half of the year, we continued to have significant sales of this product, which was tax advantage called LTPA, long-term private accident. Uh, this product uh, um, stopped completely at the end of the second quarter, which for us in Japan is March, uh, because of the change in the tax regulation. Uh, we had a uh, weak third quarter, and in the fourth quarter, we had very strong sales of medical products, uh, so, so, uh, which means that the, uh, the, the protection side of the business continued to, uh, to develop quite, uh, quite nicely. On the savings side, we had some successes, but we had one big disappointment, which is that our um, dollar-denominated uh, viable annuity didn't take off in the bank assurance channel. This is why we, uh, we, have, we have launched in January uh, 07 uh, a yen-denominated viable annuity, which we expect will uh, give us the uh, success we need in bank assurance. But all in all, we manage uh, uh, with a, this changing regulation to have very strong uh, sales of protection, good sales of, um, of uh, savings product, uh, even though the yen, uh, the, the dollar-dominated VA didn't uh, work well, we still had good sales of savings products, which uh, led to the increase in the uh, unit, um, unit link business, uh, uh, but all in all, a, a strong performance. And on the earnings side, as you saw, we had flat earnings in Japan, but this was on the back of a positive non-recurring item of uh, 67 million euros in 2005, uh, uh, which means that we are not worried about the um, ongoing performance uh, from an earnings standpoint of our Japanese operation. Other question? Yeah. Yes, hello. Uh, Aaron Duelguet from uh, Exan Bente Paribas. I have uh, two questions. First, a uh, question about Winterthur, a second one about uh, the UK market. Uh, first question, I wonder if you could share with us uh, some of your assumptions in, uh, in the new uh, cost synergies uh, target for winter to integration. And in fact, be, be behind that, uh, I would like to know what is the expected number before policy orders benefit? And in fact, what is the, the underlying assumption of the percentage of synergies that you will have to share with your clients? Because there are two issues. There is a, the restructuring gains from a one hand, but the second issue, it is what is the strategy of AXA in terms of uh, pricing uh, strategy? Uh, what, will, uh, what will be the, the numbers for the clients? Second question about the UK market strategy. The tariff trend uh, you disclosed today is, doesn't seem to be in line with the message from, your, from some of your competitors on the, uh, on the motor market. I mean, tariff decrease versus uh, need to increase uh, tariff on the motor business. And in fact, uh, perhaps it is a specificity of AXA because, uh, linked to your strategy of comeback, uh, in particular on the direct direct distribution uh, uh, market. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Denis, do you want to take the first one? Uh, yes. So we, we will not give you the, uh, the at this stage, the pre-policy uh, uh, order uh, uh, allocation uh, numbers, but, uh, the, and we've not made, uh, I mean, we've not made uh, um, bold assumptions on that. Uh, it happens that we have a significant uh, participating business uh, in, um, in Germany. Uh, so uh, this is this is where there is a big difference between the uh, um, impact uh, on a on a pre-policy holder participation and an impact and the impact on the post-policy holder participation. This is this is essentially uh, in uh, in that uh, uh, area that we see the uh, that we see the uh, the difference. Uh, but uh, uh, we our assumptions on the synergies are not different than uh, the ones that we had made uh, in June, except that we had now have firmed up numbers and detailed plans uh, of implementation. This is why Henri has indicated to you that he was uh, quite confident in the outcome of those um, of those synergies. I mean, we we, uh, we we are quite a long way further in the uh, development. Yeah, and and I think I mean the. Um, um I mean, what I said very clearly, the fact that uh, say the, uh, the people which we are expecting to leave have been leaving earlier than what we were expecting, which is one of the, uh, one of the elements in the, in the costs. To go to the UK question, um, I think the, uh, your question arises from the fact that, I mean, what we've been showing is how the average premium for the existing business is evolving. So it, the average premium in the existing portfolio, which is generally speaking the essential part of the portfolio, it doesn't say anything about the price for the new business. And what the competitors are saying, it's not that they are increasing their prices on their existing book. What they are doing is that they are a, a increasing their prices or their pricing on the, uh, on the new business. <clears throat> and, and for us, this, I mean, this difference is significant because uh, as you know, uh, and as, as you rightly said, Erwan, we, what, what happens in the UK for us is that we are, we are moving from a small portfolio in, in motor to a larger portfolio in motor, uh, and we have expanded our underwriting from a fairly narrow segment uh, two years ago to a much broader, broader uh, part of the market now, which means that we are pricing now for uh, non-standard um, non risks. Uh, which uh, are uh, w w with prices that are significantly higher than the prices that we uh, apply to our uh, existing portfolio, uh, while having a positive, I mean, a quite successful uh, uh, hit rate with the uh, with the customers. Uh, this uh, allows me to also to mention that we've uh, we we continue to uh, be in line with that strategy of. Uh, re-entering the motor market with the acquisition of Swift Cover, which is a, an internet-only uh, uh, writer of, uh, of uh, motor business. We did, in fact, um, uh, underwrite 75% of that business already, um, uh, and we are now going to underwrite 100% of the uh, Swift Cover business, which is a, a business which has a, a very uh, uh, good uh, cost position and which represents probably the, uh, the new trends in the motor market in the UK. Next question. Yep. Good morning, Thomas Jacquet from Chevrolet. I have two questions. The first one is regarding uh, the attractiveness of Eastern Europe for you, as we see that emerging markets now account for an increased proportion of your growth uh, in PNC, and we've seen two major transactions on the Russian market recently. So, could we see this kind of operations and not only small bolt-on acquisitions? And my second question is more an accounting issue. Uh, could you comment uh, the income tax expense? Because I calculate that uh, the burden is climbing by 90%, so it's quite an increase. The in, it, we, income tax expense. Income tax. On, the, uh, on Eastern Europe, well, it's, it's one of the attractions of the, uh, of the Winterthur deal, the fact that they had uh, good positions in, um, in four of the uh, emerging Eastern European markets. Uh, and as you know, we had, on the other hand, started the direct operation, uh, um, PNC direct operation in Poland. So uh, we clearly view the, um, um, I would say, the, uh, the new Eastern European members of the EU as a natural territory for expansion, we are much more cautious 
as far as uh, an expansion outside from the European Union is concerned. There are some countries which we are looking at uh, uh, positively, uh, but, but I would say uh, not all of them, and at this stage, uh, uh, Russia is not in the spectrum. Uh, on, on the tax side, uh, I believe uh, that our, our income tax charge effectively increased in 2006. Uh, I would say on a normalized basis, you could expect that the income tax charge should be of the order of 25%. Uh, and uh, I, I believe that it was probably more like 21 last year uh, and perhaps in excess of the 25 this year. Uh, but the, uh, on a normalized basis, 25% uh, tax uh, charge would be uh, what, uh, what you should expect from AXA. And I suggest that IR comes, comes back to you uh, with, uh, with more numbers. Next question. Do we have uh, any question uh, uh, on the uh, on the f on the phone or on the? You have a question coming from Andrew Crane, City Group London. Please go ahead. Um, good morning. Couple of questions. Uh, firstly, the slide you gave on property casualty rate increases and decreases. Could you give us a sense of what you see claims costs growing at? And secondly, on the life side, could you split? Uh, the fees and revenues in both 05 and 06 between those pertaining to separate account business versus general account business. Could you repeat your second question because we didn't understand it? Uh, uh, Under the um, alternative format for reporting uh, the life earnings, you split the revenues between investment margin, technical margin, and fees and revenues. What I was after was a split of the fees and revenues uh, uh, for 05 and 06 between that which is pertaining to the um, separate account business as opposed to the general account business. Okay. Uh, on the claims, on the claims cost trends, uh, Andrew, uh, the, the the claims cost trends is, uh, I mean, depends for, from one country to the next. But uh, I would say that on average, our claims costs are flat or slightly down. Uh, so they, they continue to go up on the uh, bodily injury side, but we had uh, uh, we, we had overall uh, a claims cost trend which was uh, quite favourable and uh, uh, roughly uh, roughly flat or slightly down. But do you don't anticipate that going forward, do you? Sorry, we don't they anticipate that um, into the future to have flat um, claims. Well, yeah, it's, well, it's, I mean, it's difficult to predict, but uh, we, we, I mean, we, we are doing a lot, uh, as we explained uh, um, both last October and the previous October in our 2012 uh, presentation. We do a lot in terms of, uh, of uh, fro uh, uh, fraud, uh, claims, leakage. Uh, claims leakage, and, uh, and, uh, and claims procurement. So we expect to, uh, to work on that number quite, uh, quite actively uh, going forward. And uh, it's very difficult to predict, but we are, we, this is a, a figure that we will continue to uh, monitor uh, very, very closely, and we expect to continue to have a, a reasonably good performance going forward. Uh, obviously, we can't, uh, we can't predict general inflation, but uh, we, we are quite, uh, quite pleased with that uh, outcome so far. On, on the fees and revenues split between uh, general account and separate account, I don't have that number, uh, and uh, I don't think we have that number overall, but I will let uh, Etienne and uh, the IR team come back to you. Okay. Other question? We have the next question coming from Nick Holmes, Lehman Brothers London. Please go ahead. Hi, Nick. Hi, yes, it's Nick Holmes at Lehman. I had a couple of questions. First one is, with the rollout of the accumulator-type products outside the U.S., I wondered if you could give us uh, a little bit of an update on where you are with product launches in each country and where you think uh, the most impact could be. Then the second question is on German motor. I noticed that you say you're seeing pricing increases um, on your in-force book, and I thought mutuals were still cutting pricing. And therefore, my question is, does this mean that you're prepared to lose market share in German motor? <clears throat> okay, two very good questions. Uh, on the accumulator rollout, uh, 
We think it's, uh, it's starting to be um, a very significant success. Uh, as I said, we have uh, put in place the uh, Irish hedging platform. If you look at the way it goes uh, in Germany, uh, you've seen the very, uh, very, very strong impact on the German new business value. Uh, if I go back to the 2006 performance of Twinstar, I think we've been uh, uh, at least as successful as we thought, or more successful than we thought, on the uh, regular premiums. Um, we still, uh, um, I would say, think we could do better on the single premiums uh, uh, sold or distributed by, uh, by brokers. We have started since the beginning of this year to distribute Twinstar through uh, um, a banking agreement uh, uh, with SE Bank, and, and it seems to, uh, to, work, uh, to work very well. Um, we, um, we have plans to launch it, but maybe I'll ask Freddy, um, Freddy Bucart to uh, explain what's going on in the uh, Northern European uh, region, and, and, and then I'll comment on the, uh, on the UK and on the French market. Well, outside of, uh, of Germany, where you know the product has been launched, like Henri just mentioned, um, you know we are yeah. planning to launch accumulator uh, in Belgium. As a matter of fact, you know the planning was to launch it at uh, somewhere at the end of the first quarter, and we are uh, still waiting for the tax ruling, you know, which we expect in the, I would say in the coming two months now, uh, before uh, being able uh, to launch it. And we are, you know, for as far as 2007 is concerned, we are exploring uh, the possible launch of Accumulator then in uh, uh, Switzerland and in the Netherlands. But, you know, uh, uh, there is no, uh, you know, date that has been fixed, you know, to, uh, uh, to launch those products uh, this year. Okay. In, in Japan, as Denis said before, we have launched the... Um, the yen uh, denominated uh, variable annuity and and uh, this uh, uh, this should start to uh, to work in the in the other countries uh, Denis, do you want to comment because yeah. there is a chart in the uh, in the appendixes yeah. um, it's it's not in the appendices ah, no, it's, 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 not it's in, in, the appendices. in our, in our Sorry, own appendices, in our own appendices. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we expect to launch in the uh, in uh, italy and spain uh, in the spring uh, we expect to launch uh, i believe in france also in the spring uh, for the uh, salaried, um, salaried network. Uh, we expect to launch in the UK uh, probably uh, during the summer uh, and uh, in Australia and Hong Kong in the, uh, in the second half of the year. Uh, but uh, I, I would say that uh, in terms of volumes, our largest expectations would be uh, uh, from, uh, from Japan and Belgium uh, in 2007. And, and we'll see how it pans out. This is, there is an internal competition for that. Uh, if I can take the yeah, German motor question, uh, we, we uh, uh, I mean, there, there is, again, as Henri indicated, the difference between uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, price at which we renew the business and the, the price at which we, uh, we price for new business. Uh, as you know, Germany is a country where uh, roughly 50% or slightly more than 50% of the business is renewed on January 1. And uh, we uh, have again been uh, quite successful uh, in our renewal campaign in Germany at year end 06. Uh, and uh, we have a, a net uh, inflow of, uh, I believe, uh, 70, uh, 75,000 uh, uh, new, uh, new uh, contracts on the AXA side, plus 30,000 on the uh, Vintertour side, so roughly um, 100,000 new contracts. Uh, the, the pricing for those contracts was, uh, was uh, competitive, but it was also uh, uh, done through, uh, I mean, uh, thanks to a good advertising campaign and the fact that we have this uh, dual product strategy with a, an eco product and a VIP product. Uh, but all in all, uh, we have man managed to maintain uh, uh, solid uh, prices on the, uh, on the in-force and continue to gain market share on new business. very, very quickly on the accumulator product, just to ask, um, you mentioned Australia, and I just wondered whether you think the impact in Australia could be significant since it's a big unit-linked market without, I believe, any similar products of that type. 
Is that worthy of any comment? Well, it's it's uh, it, it's difficult to to comment at this stage because uh, um, Australia is is a market where uh, the. Uh, uh, the fall in equity markets in 2001, 2002, 2003 was just a blip. So there is a very strong equity culture and the, uh, the um, level of confidence of the uh, customers in the equity market is much, much higher than it is, uh, for example, in Europe. So the, uh, uh, in, in, um, I would say if in continental Europe or in, in the US, there is a strong customer perception of the risk of investment in equities, and, uh, uh, and uh, so the value of the guarantees, I think, will be perceived by the customer quite, uh, quite clearly. Uh, in Australia, what we don't know yet is how the market will react to, to the value and, uh, versus the cost of the guarantees. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Other question? Coming from Stuart Blair, Mary Lynch, London. Please go ahead with your question. Good morning, everyone. It's Blair Stewart from Merrill Lynch speaking. I've got a couple of questions regarding the UK life market. Um, given the very strong growth in 2006, I just wondered what your expectations were for growth in 2007. And perhaps you can also comment on, uh, on your distribution strategy in the UK life uh, market going forward. Also, just related to that, any more thoughts on, on the UK annuity market where you've been absent? someone else could run your closed book more effectively than you could in the UK. Okay, on the uh, on the UK life, as uh, as Denise said, I mean the uh, the strong 06 performance was due to a combination of uh, a day impact plus good sales on the uh, on the offshore bonds plus the fact that we have I would say renewed the uh, the product range. When we uh, uh, when we look at 2007 uh, I think we are quite confident that uh, with the, uh, I would say, further renewal of the product range, uh, we should be uh, we should be more and more competitive. As you've seen, the uh, the acquisition of uh, Sync Destiny is not uh, a, a neutral uh, element. We think that this will give us a significantly uh, better access to uh, to distribution. And the uh, the addition of Winterthur, which is uh, very well positioned uh, um, in, um, uh, I would say, the relationship with, uh, um, uh, I mean, on the wealth uh, on the wealth management side, is also uh, increasing the uh, the competitiveness of the group. So uh, we think that uh, the UK market, where the prospects were, uh, I would say, uh, bleak for years is a market where the, um, the picture is uh, slightly changing because the market environment is starting to be uh, better and because also all the efforts we've made to reposition ourselves in terms of uh, product offering, in terms of distribution penetration are starting to, uh, um, I would say, really take shape. There is one point where we need to uh, make significant progress, so it's the quality of service because the, uh, the quality of service um, is something which, uh, which could be improved. We've had some issues in 2006, and we need to go over them. Uh, Denis, do you want to uh, say any further thing on the, uh, on the UK? Well, uh, on the uh, oh, yeah. UK, on yeah. UK annuity market, we've not made up our minds. Yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this has not been historically uh, uh, our area of expertise, uh, and uh, we are looking at it with... Uh, with caution uh, from a pricing standpoint. And uh, uh, cl close book, um, we all are also looking at, uh, at the situation. Uh, it's obvious that the uh, uh, discount to embedded value on the uh, close book transactions that have taken place uh, in the recent month is now very close to zero. So uh, uh, it's becoming slightly more attractive. On the other hand, uh, uh, the, the, you need to take into account the scale effects uh, and uh, the impact that it has on your uh, expense base. So we have not made any decision, neither on the uh, annuity market nor our, on our close book. Uh, finally, I would just want to emphasize one, one point uh, uh, on, um, uh, on our strategy in the UK, which is that we have now uh, split the business into uh, uh, distinct business units that will be more focused, uh, one on wealth management, which Henri mentioned, one on, on uh, pension, uh, and uh, one on, uh, on protection, and one on managing the, uh, 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 the, the large uh, um, uh, 
the, the large uh, closed books that we uh, that we have. Uh, so we will have a more focused uh, management, and we expect to, uh, with that, to be uh, uh, to be performing uh, uh, even better than we did in 2006. So just to come back for a second on the uh, on the closed book issues, we are not a player who intends to uh, exit the market. And therefore, before making any decision on closed books, you have to look not only at the financials, but also at the uh, implications this could have in the relationship with the clients. Uh, because the, uh, there is something I want us absolutely to avoid, which is to have someone who is, which is one of our clients, whose, uh, I would say, policy would be, or, or who would have uh, more than one policy, one of them being administered by a sort of uh, closed book shop, and the other ones being an administered by us. I don't think this would be good for for the, uh, for the relationship. So it's something we are going to look at, but with a lot of caution. Okay, thank you. Next question. You have no further questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a last question in the room? No? If not, uh, we'll thank you.